Hello and welcome to the Friday, May 24th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Happy to have another one of our undergraduate interns uh, do a write-up about some recent malware. This one is the Redtail family of crypto coin miners. These crypto coin miners don't exploit a specific vulnerability per se in order to infect systems. They're just going for straightforward, weak username and password. The one password that our intern here, Robert, Riley was able to capture was username root and then password one two three with the O replaced by a zero. And just want to point out uh, we do have statistics about how often specific passwords are being used. If you have like a relative or a friend, a coworker who has like that super tricky password, like I just replaced the O in password with zero. Well, uh, you can actually show them the data and show them how frequently this particular password is being attempted by bots out there. Either way, this red tail botnet is quite aggressive. Uh, Robert did collect about 400 samples. The overall technique it's been using is uh, fairly common. It's uploading binaries for a couple different architectures and then basically just sees what sticks. It also does add a backdoor in the form of an authorized keys file. These authorized keys files, definitely something that you should review and keep a close eye on. And after yesterday's excursion into Wi-Fi networks today, well, uh, back to our regular diet of vulnerabilities. And we have a, well, old familiar piece of software, Veeam Backup Enterprise Manager. This tool just patched four new vulnerabilities, one with a CVSS score of 9.8. Eight, it does allow an unauthenticated attacker to log into the Beam Backup Enterprise Manager as any user. The other three vulnerabilities less severe, still up to a CSS score of 8.8, but the two of the vulnerabilities are related to weak NTLM hashes. And then we have a low vulnerability that just allows a high privileged user to read backup session logs. Updates are available for download. And Dan Gooden with Ars Technica is reporting about a little bit of an odd issue with one of the root name servers. The root name servers, of course, are, I think, sometimes considered a little bit more important than they actually are, but still they are sort of you know, one of those trust anchors in the internet and one of these root servers well uh, was lagging behind what's happening with these root servers is yes there are 13 ip addresses that are known for root servers many of these ip addresses actually have multiple copies and something called any cast, but uh, all of these root servers have to stay in sync. And there are various techniques to do this. Uh, DNS sort of has some replication uh, built in. The replication typically is triggered whenever the serial number of a particular zone is updated. And that's sort of how it was detectable that Cogent's copy of a, one of the C root servers well, uh, was falling behind by up to four days. Usually that's not a huge problem, given that the root zone is rather static. There are not a ton of updates uh, to it. And again, there are many, many copies of uh, these uh, servers. But uh, just during that time, there was also an update planned for uh, the DNS sec keys for the dot int and the dot mil zone. Dot int, uh, not all that well known. It's international organizations uh, that are UN chartered. Dot .mil, of course, US military uses that domain. And this update had to be delayed by a couple days because if uh, these uh, DNS servers are out of sync, then the cogent server would still have offered the old key and could potentially then lead to problems with verifying uh, DNS sec records. Cogent did 
publish a brief statement stating that this was related to a routing issue that they had and apparently Cogent and the Indian uh, ISP Tata did a DPR, meaning a stop routing traffic amongst each other, which uh, caused uh, miscellaneous outages, uh, in particular in Tata's network as a result. So this could very well be related to these routing issues. And as a little fun project, it's really easy to set up your own root name server. You can just download the root zone and uh, add it to one of your own name servers. And that way you're sort of kind of getting independent of some of these issues. But of course, then you have to maintain your own copy of the root zone. Back to miscellaneous vulnerabilities, we do have 10 new vulnerabilities being patched in Ivanti's Endpoint Manager, another uh, common guest in our uh, podcast here. There are a number of SQL injection vulnerabilities being addressed here. Some of them do allow an unauthenticated attacker to execute arbitrary code. However, they have to be on the same network. Cisco also fixed a SQL injection vulnerability for firepower seems to be the vulnerability of choice today when it comes to these devices. And then we have an interesting story with another supply chain vulnerability. And this time it affected a product by Justice AV Solution, a courtroom video recording software. And earlier this week, I talked about how Windows Server 2019 does have some issues with the latest Windows updates. Well, Microsoft now released an emergency out of band update to fix this particular problem. And that's it for today. Thanks everybody for listening. Thanks everybody for liking and subscribing. There will be no podcast on Monday due to the holiday here in the United States and talk to you again on Tuesday. Bye.